Welcome back to Backward Point Podcast. And before we start anything, I just want to make an announcement that I too still dream to pod for Backward Point. Life brings us to the point where at times we have to reconsider our decisions. There have been few positive discussions between myself and Bashar where he respectfully made me feel that I was needed and can still pod for Backward Point. After discussing with my family and well-wishers, I declare that I am available to be considered for this upcoming podcast. And I want to do this for my country as it comes before my personal decisions. Donning the United Hand and serving my podcast has always been and will continue to be my greatest aspirations. Backward point first. Backward point first. I would like to announce my retirement from Backward Point. <laughs> I feel like I'm being mentally tortured. Uh, there is no communication. There is no role clarity. Uh, I'm being stopped from doing other podcasts. So I, I can't deal with this restriction of doing two podcasts a year. So uh, on this podcast, I'm going to just take my retirement. From this podcast. This podcast. <laughs> and you know continue what, the podcast. You know what the wildest thing about this whole thing is? Amir posted this and Quita Gladiators is the collaborator on this post. <laughs> Why? <laughs> no idea, Why, bro. Why Quita? Why? No idea. So if you guys don't know, Backward Point is back. My name is Nazar. As always, my co-host and my brother Bashar is here this with me as well. And this is an emergency podcast that we're shooting at 12.15 a.m. at night. Because chaos in PCB. Chaos with the PCB players. And just, you know, insanity has ensued. So we thought we'd come here, share our thoughts on what's going on. Not talk about the IPL. Not talk about the Sri Lanka Bangladesh series. But this as it is the highest priority of cricket news. Bashar, you heard the news. What are your thoughts? It feels like when Avengers assemble, <laughs> there really? was once an idea. No, no, no. This is more like Suicide Squad coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Flop movie. Um, yeah, it just seems like because the World Cup is coming up, Shaheen has had a chance to speak with these players. The PCB is speaking with these players. Wait, what is Shaheen again? What is his role for the team? For now, it's sort of ambiguous. Okay, okay. No, because you mentioned him, so I was like, I don't know why you're Yeah, I, I heard the press conference today of the, the chairman, and he's like, we still don't know who the captain is. We're going to wait till the end of the Kakul army camp and, and then decide. And why are we at the Kakul army camp? Fitness. Vibes, bro. Vibes. In Ramadan. <laughs> with like a couple of key series coming up, plus the World Cup. Half the team is like go- gone for Umrah though. Like Ifti, Naseem, Babar, Imam. Wasim Jr. Wasim Jr., so who's at who's at Kakul? Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, they have to get, like get them back before uh, the Kakul camp gets started. But yeah, just never a dull day in boxing cricket, man. Um, and sometimes we wish there is. Sometimes we're like, I wish there, today was a dull day. I wish, you know, just <laughs> let us have Sundays off. <laughs> yeah. Do your conferences on a Monday. Yeah. Who the hell is pulling up on a Sunday to do a press conference, bro? Everyone's dropping all the news on a Sunday. Like, you can't even chill anymore. I think just for context, we should just start off with understanding why these players retired individually. And I think starting off with Mohammed Amir. So Mohammed Amir last played his international game for Pakistan in August of 2020. This was the COVID tour to England. He played a T20I there. And then after he came back, he announced that he was being mentally tortured by the then management, which included Ms. Dolhak, Bakar Yunus. I think Balber was the captain. So he said he's going to prefer playing leagues and because he's not contacted by the PCB, he has no NOC restrictions. So ever since then, Amr has been playing full seasons of County, The 100, CPL, BPL, GPL, G- whatever, whatever, <laughs> K- KPL, SPL. Um, my question is, um, when Amr retired, was he a centrally contracted player? I don't remember. Because, I mean, up until Mickey Arthur and Safraz were there, Amr was an integral part of the team. Yeah. So much so that in the ODI World Cup, he had I think, chicken pox or flu, and he was like not fit for the World Cup. But they still continued to persist with him. In the 2019 World Cup. Yes, and eventually he came back. He was the highest wicket taker for Pakistan. Um, like, there's no doubt about Amir, the bowler. He's always been a big match player. He turns up into big events. He's, he, Amir is clutch. No doubt about that. Mm-hmm. But it's just the way all of these things have panned out. So again, going back, Amir announces his retirement, plays leagues all over the world. And suddenly, now, months before the T20 World Cup, he takes his retirement back. And again, in this period where he's not a Pakistani international player, some of the things he did were 
not sitting right with the Pakistani fans, including myself. Um, we're going on national television, talking against Babar Azam, the team, saying Babar is not our T20 player, saying that there's no comparison with Kohli. Partially true. Okay, but exactly what I was trying to say. Were his claims valid, though? I think he has his opinions. And, you know, as people who have opinions, we have to respect his opinions. But I just think when you're still wanting to play for Pakistan, it doesn't sit right when you're critiquing your current players who you're going to be playing with in the future. You're sitting captain. So you're sitting captain, you know, saying that Shaheen is average or Nassim is the only good baller or there's no match winners or rankings don't matter. All these things didn't sit right with the Pakistani fans, even though there might there may be some level of truth behind that. But again, so just for Amir to come back on the team now, like how is that going to change the whole team dynamics? Yeah, because um, Babur and Ko had sort of built the... Uh, for for better or for worse, they built a team of wholesomeness and a team of friends and a team of brotherhood. Something that was really contrast to what Pakistani ethos was, especially in the dressing room. Like we were more accustomed to quote unquote groupings, and we were more accustomed to people not liking each other and rivalries between you know sets of players in the dressing room. You know, famously or infamously, I should say. Like you know, we we know players that have swung bats at each other and, and call each other names and, you know. Ride it against captains, 09 Champions Trophy. Uh, they ride it against uh, Yunus Khan. Yeah, like stuff like that has been evident in the Pakistani camp. And then the whole Babar era was like a very uh, change of pace for Pakistani cricket. And we were sort of getting used to it. And this for co- forthcoming era uh, might just be a return to old form or I don't know. It's just very peculiar because both of these statements from Imad and um, uh, Muhammad Amir come at a very interesting time. Babar is no longer captain and Mickey is no longer coach or actually no, no, no longer part of the staff at all. And, you know, everybody who ha- they had a problem with is no longer part of that circle of the PCB. Ramiz is out. And it just seems very convenient because... When Pakistan actually needed a fast bowler, where they were going and choosing Vasim Jr. and choosing Hassan Ali and Hassan Ali, Muhammad Amir was nowhere to be seen. All right, that's what exactly when they needed him to come back, and they needed him donning all this whatever I was reading before, like I was donning the greens, donning the greens and whatnot. Like I was like, whoa, who wrote? Firstly, there's lots of spelling errors. I don't know if he actually physically did write this in his notes app. But like, you know, he says stuff like donning the green jersey and serving my country has always been and will continue to be my greatest aspirations. Sounds good on paper, buddy. I don't know if you've actually sort of followed through on that, uh, Muhammad Amir. I, I have my reservations for sure um, from this retirement. I want to see how, I want to see how the PCB takes this because this comes out and then Mohsen Nakhvi does a pre- presser where he doesn't actually even mention this whole fiasco at all, which is very interesting to me. I mean, he sort of glazes over the fact that he doesn't even know who the captain is for the T20 World Cup. It's three months away, four months away. So we're sitting in a position where Pakistan is potentially on the brink of changing its third captain in five months for T20Is. We have, I don't want to say disgraced or, uh, you know, just shameful. I don't want to use those words. But we have players who have sort of lost the public's trust, um, fanfare, uh, definitely popularity, that are announcing retirements, re- re- renouncing their ret- retirements and coming back into the fray, uh, especially someone like Imad Vasim, who sort of has proven with his performances more so than with his own words. I would like to know your opinion on the difference between Amir renouncing his retirement and Mohammed, Imad Vasim renouncing his retirement. Like, which one is more in fact, impactful and which one will actually see the light of day in the sense, which one will we see, which one of these will we actually see in the Pakistan team in the next six months? So I think, uh, yeah, the, like you mentioned, the timing of everything is quite critical. Amir has a really good record in the CPL. Uh, just last season, he was the third highest wicket taker. He took 16 wickets in 10 innings at an economy of 6.87. Uh, he's been a part of the Jamaica Tatalawas team for the past couple of years. His overall CPL record is 43 wickets in 29 innings, average of 14, economy of 6.5. So he takes wickets. He's also quite economical. 
again, there's no doubt about Mohamed Amin, the bowler. I, I would say even right now, he's one of the top five pacers in Pakistan. Um, because what makes him stand out from everybody else is that Amir is very smart. At this point in his career, he's 31 years old. Uh, he's skillful. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to get a batsman out. And even though when he was 17, he always had that in him, like getting such an out, getting ponting out, bowling a maiden wicket over to Dilshan, who was the man in the tournament in the 09 T20 World Cup final. So Amir has just been that guy. But there are doubts on Amir, the player. Now, just considering that Amir is back in the team and our fast bowling trio is sort of Shaheen, Naseem, Amir, and maybe Haris Rauf, how does Amir fit into this 11? Because if it's a new ball, we have Shaheen and Naseem as a new ball opening pair. And then Imad is back. So if you want, Imad can even ball the new ball. And then you have Mohammed Amir. And I'm just looking at some records. Uh, the past, few, like the last, I think, three or four T20 nationals that uh, Amir played, he bowled first change and he went for lots of runs in England and in Australia. So I think if you look at players as, as resources and if you want to optimize the resources to their max potential, Mohammed Amir has to ball the new ball. But at what cost? At Shaheen bowling first change, at Nassim bowling first change, because they're also amazing with the new ball. Nassim Shah was one of the best new ball ballers in this last PSL. Balled two maiden overs of the seven total maiden overs that happened in the PSL. Had the highest top ball percentage in the, in the power play. So it's a no-brainer for Nassim to ball in the power play with a new ball. And for him to share the new ball with Shaheen. Shaheen's first over is always an event in world cricket. So how does Mohamed Amr fit here? There's talks about, and the people, sentiments are that Mohamed Amr adds a different dynamic to this, to this bowling attack because he adds experience. But just to remind everybody, Shaheen has been playing for the past six years. Nassim has been playing for the past five years. Hardest stroke for the past four years. So uh, I'm not sure exactly how Amir adds a lot of value into this uh, team. Yes, maybe in a big, big match against India, a World Cup semifinal, he might turn up. But aside from that, I think people's sentiments are divided. I did an Instagram poll on Backward Point. I asked people, do you think Muhammad Amr should be part of Pakistan's T20 World Cup squad? 65% of people said yes. 35% of people said no. And this is quite a big sample size. Like I would say around 2,000 plus votes. Um, and just the thoughts and comments from people were, Amr is a traitor. He should never play again. That's sort of related to his match-fixing thing. Um, he preferred leagues over the country. Uh, he, we don't need him. And then there's also people saying that he adds experience to a bowling lineup and he's a big match player and we really need him in this bowling attack. So that's just where we are at the moment. Where are you at the moment? I think just from a combination point of view, we don't need Amir. Like if we had needed, when we needed Amir was the last ODI World Eight Cup. months ago. And he never came to take his retirement back then. And now I think once we have lots of fast bowling talent, we have Shaheen who's getting better day by day. Nassim who was looking day by day better with his uh, rehab. Haris Rove coming back from injury. And then we have Zaman Khan. We have Abbas Afridi. So I think this is a good young pool of fast bowlers where, again, I don't see exactly how Amr can fit in this bowling attack. I sort of agree with you. I echo your sentiments when it comes to this. I don't see Amir's retirement that much of an impact. Um, I, it did cause a lot of waves and ruffles and definitely Twitter was a light. And we got a lot of messages. We got a lot of DMs on, our, on Backward Point, on, on Instagram, on, uh, on, on the Discord server. People really had a lot of meaningful things to say there. But I, at the end of the day, I think this will just be a wrinkle. And I don't think... I mean, I would be very surprised if this comes back and like we actually see Mohammed Amir in the 15 for the T20 squad. That would be very surprising to me. At best, he could be a backup baller for Hardest Rove because you can't drop Hardest Rove. He has the second most wickets in T20 internationals since January of 2020. And, you know, people are taking his ODI performances and they're taking it out of proportion and saying that he's a bad wide ball baller. I think he's still one of the best middle overs and death over ballers for Pakistan. And once he comes back from injury, uh, he'll be, again, part of the Pakistan team. And I know how much Shaheen has belief in Haris Rove. So, at best, maybe Amir is a backup baller for Shaheen, uh, Naseem. Could be a Haris. fourth option where in, in a situation where the top three get injured. Because Zaman Khan, Abbas Afridi, are they new ball bowlers? Zaman can ball with a new ball. Abbas Afridi, no. 
So let's say if the top two get injured, we do need someone in the background that can come in and bowl the new ball. So that's the only scenario where I see Mohamed Amir's retirement actually taking effect, where he comes out and he gets selected for the squad. It'll be more of a, if the top two giants get injured or are unfit, then yeah, we'll need Mohamed Amir to step in. But I don't see another situation where Amir, Shaheen, and Nassim are playing together and Haris Drew. Like, and then you have Imad as a bowler and Shady as a bowler. Like that's, that's overkill. And Iftihar. Right? And if the And Saim. Uh, well, I don't know about time, but like, isn't that like, all of that is overkill at this point? Yeah. Like, yeah, you'll need about six bowlers when you're playing a good World Cup, you know, just in case in a situation where Shalab gets hit for runs or any other top four gets hit, hit hits for runs, you'll, 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 ban- you'll bounce back with a bowler that's a little bit more informed, can contain. I get that. But six, seven, eight bowlers in the team? I don't know if that works. I think if anything, Pakistan is really missing a fast bowling all rounder. Amar Jamal. Um, but Amr Jamal goes for lots of runs and his batting isn't as good as we thought it would be. So I think there's still that vacant spot at number eight. Uh, could be Amr Jamal, could be Wasim Jr., could be Fahim Ashraf. Or how about if Pakistan does take Nasim's batting a bit more seriously, puts him in the nets, gives him a rigorous, um, you know, net session where he actually sort of hones his batting craft a little bit more. That eighth spot could just be filled by Nasim. Being the batter that he is. It's, I think it's still too early for Nasim to be batting at number eight. What about Shaheen and his confidence in himself? <laughs> and the quieting of the eight sports uh, critics. Uh, again, I think number eight, Shaheen coming in. Uh, when you're in a crunch match, you need, when you're chasing, you need a deep batting order like Islamabad United had, where they, where they had the likes of Imad, Hader Ali, Fahim Ashraf, and then Nasim coming in. So that makes a bit more sense. But Shaheen, unless he improves his batting a bit more, I can't see him as a sustainable number eight batsman. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I think that's true. But yeah. There's also Go one ahead. more point. If we take back Mohamed Amr, um, straight out of retirement to the Pakistan team, how does that make our domestic players feel? Like someone like Mohamed Ali, who was the second highest secretary of the PSL, one of the top performers of domestic cricket. When he sees that a bowler like Mohamed Amr cannot play domestic cricket for the past four years, comes back out of nowhere, and go straight into the Pakistan team. Why is someone like a Muhammad Ali, Abbas Afridi, Zaman Khan, um, and other bowlers doing the grind in domestic cricket when you can just retire and then retire when the Pakistan team needs you? That's a very fair point. Now we're coming back. Now we're coming. At, we're hitting a point of ethics. We're hitting a point of what players are thinking, what the management really thinks, and how this, what the repercussions and what the precedents we're setting out when we're doing something like this, right? That's what we're talking about now. At this point, um, Pakistan cricket has known to set the wrong precedence multiple times. I think um, the re-inclusion of Mohamed Amr in the Pakistan squad itself is evidence of, you know, the wrong precedence being set um, for future stars. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. But for both these characters, for... Mohammed Amir and Fahim Ad Basim, I think it's a very interesting litmus test of what the PCB thinks is right and wrong. In a position right now where Imad Basim is literally on top of the world, you know, helping Islam United win three straight eliminators, playoff games, coming in and winning the final single-handedly. And, well, not single-handedly, but, you know, being there for, till the finish. Puts PCB in a position where they're like, we actually need this man at 6-7-8. We need him. Imad has the PCB on their knees and the way he has negotiated the past uh, couple of days with his uh, research in the Pakistan team, I think it's applaudable for a business student who has studied negotiations. <laughs> the amount of leverage that Imad Wasim has had, he has negotiated a great deal with the PCB. So no contract with the PCB. So he has no restrictions to play leagues. Uh, he has a guaranteed spot till the T20 World Cup. And then he can play all the leagues that he wants. He just signed up with the 100. He was the second highest, uh, most, so the second most expensive player. I think got paid like 100K pounds um, for playing the 100. Plus, I think he will probably get signed in the Blast as well. And then the CPL again. So Imad's made sure that he's got a great deal. And I, I think he's balling. And not only that, like, I think the way that Imad, Imad's resurgence paved out is what Mohamed Amir hoped would happen with him back in 2020. That wasn't the case. Pakistan went into the 2021 World Cup. Favorites won every single game except for the playoff game. Pakistan in the 2022 World Cup 
went in, played the final in MCG, came back, lost, unfortunately, but, you know, we're through to the final. And then the Asia Cups in the middle, they also played the semis and the finals as well there. And not only that, the only abysmal performance that Pakistan actually had was the 23 World Cup in Asia Cup, where they were out. And by then, it was too late for Mohamed Amber to come. All the while, Imad Wasim was playing a silent but deadly game, which was, I will just keep my mouth shut. I'll keep it up. I'll keep up my performances. And then we'll talk at the end. And I don't think, uh, you know, credit to Islamabad United as well. They picked him for platinum in this diamond, diamond in the previous uh, PSL. And they persisted through him in the entire PSL. Like the first five to six games, he was a no-show. And then slowly and steadily, he picked up his form and won them the whole PSL. And now he's at a point where he's like, I'm going to take back my retirement. You're going to put me in the 15. You're going to utilize me. And I will potentially even win you the T20 World Cup. That will be the greatest redemption arc of any cricketer I've seen in the past 15 years. If that happens, if that comes through, I will sit here and be like, Imad Vasim pulled the most amazing redemption arc that I've seen. Also, Imad's in a great position where we've given so many chances to Muhammad Nawaz, and he just hasn't been as clutch as we thought he would be. Babar Azam said, Nawaz, you made a match with him. Ever since then, he's been losing Pakistan matches and he hasn't been as clutch as we thought he would be in the opportunities he's got over in Mahal Dasim. They're numerous. The only game that I remember Mohamed Nawaz actually being impactful is that Asia Cup game against India in 2022. Yeah. Where he hit 42 off 19 or something. Yeah. Something Around crazy that. like that. That's the only Mohamed Nawaz innings I, I remember. If Mohamed Nawaz had won Pakistan that thrilling 2022 game, where he bowled the last over, was trying to defend 16. If that had gone Nawaz's way, he, we might have not never, never been having this conversation. Yeah. Because if you look back, Shaheen and Asim, the way they turned up for Pakistan after um, uh, Mohammed Amir's retirement, we never went back to Amir. Mm. The reason that we keep going back to Imad Basim is A, his performance has been immaculate. Like, we have to give him his flowers, we have to give him his props. Islam United do not have a third PSL title if Imad Basim is not part of that squad. This is fact. But we've also not, the other people that we've tried in his place, the Khush Shahs of the world, the Mohammed Nawazas of the world, they just haven't paid off the way that the captain wanted. So we're at a point where we need an Imad Basim to come back and save that 7-8 spot, 6-7-8 spot, because we genuinely don't have a lower batter that can hit sixes and hit fours and win you clutch games. We tried Asif Ali, bailed on him. We tried Azam Khan, bailed on him. We tried Hadr Ali, bailed on him. Right, so we're at a point we actually need that spot filled because otherwise we're in a problem where the lower order does not fire. Like the top order, if there's no Simon in the team, takes their time to build. So the ten over seventy, and then the last ten overs you need hundred to at least get a respectable total, and you don't have anybody after five who can hit the ball like across the park. So Imad Wasim just at this point seems like a no-brainer. He fits the balance of the Pakistan team. He fits. Every he his expertise is exactly what's required for the Pakistan team right now, and his case is stronger than Mohammad Amr's in the eleven. Also, Imad's uh, CPL stats. Imad was the most impactful player of the CPL last year in 2023, and even the year before, he was the second most impactful player. So, again, he has a vast experience in the CPL, playing in those conditions, uh, even playing in the MLC that was in the USA where they had drop in pitches. That's where. Uh, Pakistan and India are playing their group match in New York. It's a drop in pitch. So Imad's experience there, Imad's just experience playing cricket for so long at this point, uh, will be integral to Pakistan having a shot of winning this World Cup. So I'm sort of happy that Imad is back because we don't have many backups for Imad. But Mohamed Amir, not feeling too great about that. Don't know how that changes the team dynamics. Because if you look back, Imad Basim. Muhammad Amir and Babar Azam used to be best buds. That was a trio of its own back in Karachi Kings. Something happened over the course of, I think, Babar being captain or Imad letting go of captaincy or Muhammad Amir going on TV, Babar going to Bizalmi, where they got disconnected. And even after the uh, 2021 T20 World Cup, Babar just dropped Imad for, for no reason. And then Nawaz was a prominent part of the team. Again, not sure exactly what the thought process behind that was. It seemed like Imad felt like he was betrayed by Bobber and co. Um, 
And then there was like there was a point where Imad came back into the team last year, and he said, "If I get dropped again, I will take legal action against the PCB." So that's how frustrated he was. Um, so yeah, just just happy that he's back. Uh, and Pakistan uh, has a, a decent team now. I think with Imad being in the middle order, him being a floater, uh, him playing a crucial part in, in critical chases. Because at this point, that game against Zalmi, not only did he score a fifty, but he helped Heather Ali build his innings yeah. and that's what you need a, an experienced player who can guide the youngsters on the other end as well I think it'll be a very interesting psychological test to see how the PCB handles the whole Imad Babur situation because at this point both are integral to your 11 you cannot drop one for the other and they both at least narratively we don't know again again we don't know exactly what the relationship between those two are but it is very evident by the way that the narrative is set in the news media, in, you know, social media, um, that there is some dislike between the two, you know? And now, I don't know what the onus, who the onus is on, like whose fault it is actually. We, we will never know. But the way that the PCB handles this will be very, very interesting to see because what this basically is, is just a massive miscommunication, right? You need to sit both parties down and you need to talk it out. I think that's the captain's job. Who's the captain? Even if it's not the captain's job, it's the coach's job. Who's the coach? At this point, it might be a captain in the Kakul Academy who's going to be like, <laughs> that's the, bro, Captain Jamshid here, bro, sit down. That's a major, bro. That's a brigadier. Major. Um, that could be the case, but the, basically, it just needs, this needs to be sorted out. Before anyone dons any greens, <laughs> these two need to sit, sit, out, sit together and sort it out. Right? Hug it out. Be bros. Be friends again. Because whatever the dynamic has been said in the Pakistan team, at least it's a good one. I don't want to disrupt it. I, I think that will negatively impact the Pakistan team a lot more than who the captain is and who the coach is. If people don't like each other in the same team, you know, and, and people will bring this up. I can already feel it in the chat. They're like, oh, well, Wasim and Wakar had beef throughout their entire relationship. That was different. Those are two fast bowlers who just wanted to, out each other. Like they wanted to outperform each other. You know, if Vasim is taking four, then Wakar wants to take four. That's a different sort of competition altogether. It's not like Babur's fans being so toxic that they're chanting Babur Azam, Babur Azam when Imad is fielding. That sort of divide is different. One more thing I noticed is um, I think Babur's fans have also trolled Shaheen Afridi so much that. I'm not sure if you see saw that clip on uh, Samin Narna hosting Shaheen Afridi on their Kalandar's Inside Out thing. Yeah. It seemed like that was staged to clarify Shaheen's stance on Babur because the way those questions were set up, it was like, Yele Shaheen, this is a full toss. Get out of the park. And Shaheen was just clarifying that Babur is my brother. I love Babur. Babur led the team in a great way. Now I'm taking over. So it seemed like Shaheen and Lahore are sort of annoyed by this whole perception that Shaheen stabbed Babur in the back and took his captaincy over. Um, I think it was more of a, a, a communication done by the PCB that Babur is on captain, Babur resigns, and then Shaheen takes over. So not sure why all the Babur fans are going after Shaheen. It seems like anybody who is anti-Babur and critical of Babur, they're suddenly anti-Babur, and then their Babur's fans go and troll them. Yeah, I mean, there was a, in our Discord server, there's Aman, Aman Patel who made a very distinctive point that he said that it's not fair to round up Babur Azam fans and those toxic cricket fans together because those are two different entities. Just to give them a name, be tall, calling them Babur Azam fans is actually a disservice to Babur Azam fans, people who actually like Babur Azam. And I, and I sort of agree with that point as well. And that trolls will be trolls. And, you know, right now the trolls are, are genuinely like stringing upon Babur's coattails and they love that fact that they have that hold on or chokehold on that whole era or that whole fandom. Um, it, I just feel like it's, it's rubbing across a wrong way to a lot of people, including us. Like we get a lot of hate from Bobber fans as well. Or not, again, not Bobber fans, but these Bobber trolls as well. And, um, you know, if it gets to someone like Shaheen Afidi, imagine what it's doing to Imad Basim. Yeah. Like, and Shaheen and Bobber are genuinely friends. Imad Basim, Imad and... Babur, I don't know when was the last time they had communication between them. I think it was that video on the PCB channel after Babur scored 100 against New Zealand where they had Imad and Babur make a post-match video where Imad's like, 
that was a great innings, one of the best innings I've seen in my life. Bobber is a great player, and this and that, which is sort of contrary to what he was saying on TV a few months ago during the World Cup. I mean, again, stuff like this, none, no party has made this easy on the other party, if I'm being very honest. The whole Imad, Amir era on TV, they didn't do anyone any favors. They didn't do anybody any favors. And then the whole Bobber being as silent as he was, they didn't do anybody any favors either. Like a good press conference just coming out, clearing the air, would have actually set a good precedence on the rest of the guys because we hardly see that coming out from, from the PCB or the Pakistani cricket think tank. This whole situation, the way it unfolds is going to be interesting. Again, I think the bottom line is that we do see Imad in the 11 or in the 15, but I don't even think I see Amr in the 15, let, let alone the 11. I think the Amr news is just, you know, if Imad's doing it, I'll do it. Let's see if we can both you get think Amr stole Imad's thunder? No. So Imad's retirement, Imad taking back his retirement is still a bigger deal than Amr taking back his retirement. It has to be. Imad just won a PSL. You know, he's been consistent with the CPL. The next World Cup is in a place where it's Imad friendly, you know, spinning tracks and um, dropping pitches. And it just makes sense for Imad's retirement to come back because Imad's retirement was pressure based. People were asking for it. I mean, there was a point us on this podcast was like, maybe he should come back. No one in the past 12 months is like, so when is Amr coming back? Yeah. When is he taking his retirement? Look, Amir has done a lot for this country. Like the Champions Trophy, we keep mentioning it. That five-over spell will go down in history forever um, as one of the best Pakistani bowling spells. You know, up with uh, Shoei Bakhtar's uh, 1999 Kolkata spell. Or Chennai spell, so I should say. And Vasim Akram's 1992 final spell. And like a lot of other spells that I can think of. But at the end of the day, that spell itself is seven years ago. It's a different Muhammad Amir. It's a different situation altogether. I don't think Muhammad Amir writing this Imad Wasim's news will make him come back into the 15. Now, funnier things have happened in Pakistan cricket with the specific player himself. So will I be surprised if I see his name in the 15? Probably not. But at this moment, I don't, I don't think it's going to happen. Amir taking him back as a retirement is like that ex who you love dearly. You get over her, and just when you're over her, she comes back. She texts you back. What you doing? She's like, what's up? WYD. This is why you blocked them. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just think that uh, it'll be interesting to see what Pakistan's combination is. I have a playing 11 that I made. Please. There's, there's two versions. I do one version, and it'll say it out loud. It's a Simon Rizwan opening. It's Balber one down. It's uh, Fakhar at four. It's Shadab at five. It's Iftikhar at six. It's Imad at 7, Shaheen at 8, 9, Naseem Shah, 10, Aris Rov, and 11, you can put another spinner at, in Abrar. Abrar or Usama Amir. Or if you want to play four seamers, you can then remove a spinner from the 11 and put Amr there. But I don't know exactly how Amr fits in. Um, and uh, there's also a debate whether Azam Khan should be in the team or not. That's, that's a separate playing 11 altogether. Uh, if Azam was in the team, then it's Saim, Rizwan, uh, Babur, uh, Fakhar, Azam, Iftikhar, Shadab, Imad, Shaheen, Amir, Naseem. Sorry, sorry, Haris, Rof, Naseem. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting. Pakistan has, the good thing is we have the resources. It's just about how do we put them together? What is our stance on every player? Is Amir coming back? Is Azam fit? You know, there are friendly conditions for Imad, Amir, and Azam. How are we going to go about using them to the best of the ability? I know this is not that this is not the Azam Khan podcast, but do you see Azam in the fifteen? For sure, I, I think he should be in the fifteen as a backup keeper, maybe, uh, or even as an option where you want to use him uh, in the middle overs, um, perhaps. Pakistan's first series after Ramzan is against New Zealand at home, and that is in April or May. April, in April. Okay, so and then Pakistan be- goes to Ireland and England in May and then the World Cup so it's just basically two series and then a World Cup yeah so I think whatever 15 they pick for the next series against April, against New Zealand that should 90% be the team that goes to the World Cup so does Amir play the series against New Zealand in, the, in Pakistan let's wait to find out I think that's a good way to end it Azam Khan I, again in my opinion should be in the 15 definitely 
Uh, you got to find a way to incorporate him. Um, if Fakhar is injured, Fakhar is not in form, I think Azam is the perfect one to replace him. Actually, you, there's, a, there's a combination here which says Saim Rizwan, Babar, Shadab, Azam, Iftikhar, Imad, Shaheen, Naseem, Haris Rove, and then you put in a spinner there if you want. And if you want a fourth seamer, you can have Zaman Khan, Muhammad Amir, whatever. Abbas Afridi. Abbas Afridi, insert fourth spinner, fourth seamer here. I think that's a more of a better, that's a better scenario. I don't think you need an Abrar in this team only because if Shadab is flopping, you have Iftikhar. If Iftikhar is flopping, you have Shadab. And Imad is there. And Imad is there. And you also have Saim. If so needed. do you even need a dedicated spinner at this point? I don't I, I just know. think it's good to know. have lots of bowling options, but uh, yeah. This is, look, at, look at the bowling options. You got Haris, Naseem, you got Shaheen, you got a fourth seeming option if you need. Let's just say Amir for now for placeholder purposes. Then you got Imad, Ifti, and Shadab. And then if you're actually super desperate, you got Saim in there too. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's interesting. You don't really need an abroad in that. You can, it's good to have him in the, in the 15. You genuinely get a turning track where you, a finger spinner would do wonders. Sure. But do you need him? No. Technically, Osama Amir could be a good option as well. But Osama Amir in leagues versus international, he's a different bowler. So I'm not sure if we trust him. His performances in the PSL are there. Uh, he got picked in the 100 as well. But I, I'm not sure if we want to put the trust in him to play for Pakistan. The shock, of my, the shock of my life was knowing that Osama Amir picked up 22 wickets in the PSL. Yeah. I don't That's know where. where. That's where. Exactly. Who? Who? Who are these guys that he got out? Like, I, I don't even, I don't even remember. Um, so, I mean, it's good for him. I'm glad that he's taken wickets, but I, mean, I don't know how impactful they are. I guess at this point, um, you know, we've already announced our retirement and unretirement un- from this podcast. I hope everybody uh, enjoyed this uh, episode. It was an impromptu episode. We just wanted to come out, discuss our feelings, discuss our thoughts on this whole Imad and Amr situation. Um, you know, we've, I feel like an idiot now because we did an Imad Wasim legacy podcast and like chronicling his innings and his contributions for boxing cricket. I feel like we got to... Have a little addendum to that part. Oh, I think we thought he was mediocre. Yeah. Like he had moments, but... He had moments, but he, he shut us up. Like, yeah. now you look back and you only think about the, the times he's won us games, like that Afghanistan game. Like, oh my God, that was crazy. And there was, a, there was a series against Australia or maybe a World Cup where he got two people out in the first over from his bowling. I, I feel like it was Australia, right? Imad and Dubai was a different breed. Different beast. Different beast. So now I'm like, oh my God, Imad Vaseem, how did we ever live without him? You know, recency bias will do that to you guys. Even gets gets the best of us. Um, if you guys, you know what? I genuinely want to know, genuinely want to know what other people's thoughts are on this. So please inform us of those uh, happy, happy opinions uh, in the comment section below. If you're on, if you're on YouTube, if you're on Spotify, if you want to get in touch with us, tweet, tweet us, message us on Instagram. We usually reply to most messages. If you guys are leaving like lo- long essays, Honestly, I don't read them. I don't think, Bashar, you read Bro, them people either. People are vending in our DMs. That's fine with me, actually. The PCT therapy on the Discord channel exists for a reason. Genuinely, guys, I implore everybody to join the Discord. I think that's the best place to discuss these things with, with rabid cricket fans. And it's not only Pakistani fans in there. There's Indian fans, there's Australian fans. And they have, you, see, you get other perspectives, genuinely, from outside of the Pakistani think tank and be like, what actually is the world thinking here? So that's a really good place to engage with people. And... If you guys want to support the podcast, you'll feel want, if you want us to keep doing what we're doing, please, please, please consider joining the Patreon. We just did a live call today after a long time with our Patreon subscribers. And what I just, I love that. I love those people. They're so wholesome. And um, it was just great seeing each other's, everyone's faces. So thank you all very much for joining the call today. If you guys want to be a part of future calls and future meetings like that, Patreon is down below. Um, and emoji of the day. Emoji of the day is interesting. I don't know. What, like, what is a comeback? Is it a rewind emoji? Yeah. Yeah. They had the rewind. Yeah. There we the, go. The two arrows. There we go. Rewind emoji is the emoji of the day because Bring I it feel back. like we're back in 2016, baby. Yo, 2016 World Cup squad is re-emerging. There we go. Uh, Amir's back. Imad is back. All we need is Khalid the Thief. We need Sharjeev Umar Khan, Ahmed Shazad, Umar Akmal, Mohamed Sami. Malik is already there. He Let's never get it. Respect for Shreve Malik for never announcing his retirement. This guy is a G. We don't, I don't think we understand how deep this man thinks. But Shreya Malik, respects for you. Respects. Also, he's my neighbor in Karachi. All right. Guys, thank you for watching and listening. We'll see you guys in the next episode, which will be soon. Backward point out. See you.